Hi there. In this video, we will talk about planning for passing the certification exam. You will often hear about this certification that the exam is really tough and students attempt 2 to 3 times before passing. Is it really true? Let's see. First of all, let's see some of the complaints the students who fail the exam usually have. First, the exam is really tough. There is no sufficient time to complete all the questions. The course did not cover the topics on the exam. The practice test questions are not the same as the real exam. I completed the course but still failed the exam. Now, with my experience and just to let you know that I have successfully passed all the associate as well as professional level AWS certification exams in the first attempt. So, with my experience, this is what the reality is. The exam is really tough. is it well the exam is going to test the ability of a solutions architect at the professional level so the students are expected to know the breadth as well as the depth of aws services students often acquire knowledge on the aws services at the surface level but do not dive deep into them so you need to dive deep into the concepts the students also need to know the trade offs advantages disadvantages of the service and how those services integrate with other services to form the best solution it is also critical for students to know when to and when not to use a service or options as a solution so having the knowledge at the surface level is not going to be sufficient to attempt the exam sometimes what students expect is a question like this You can already see that the question is just a single or double liner and the options are very simple whereas in the exam they face a question like this just look at the different services covered as part of a single question you have s3 storage gateway ebs ec2 glacier etc you can very well see that the question is not scratching any surface it is focused on deep concepts It is testing your ability to design for different levels of the application. First, the questions as well as the options are long and wordy and sometimes even longer than this, right? And on top of that, more often than not, almost all options seem viable or correct. So, how to choose the best one? And there are close to 80 such questions. This is where the students start feeling the heat during the exam and if they unfortunately fail, they start complaining that the exam was tough my friends the exam is supposed to be tough but i am going to tell you how to prepare so that you do not get overwhelmed by such questions and in fact you will actually get the crux of how to solve such tough questions that too within the time so just stay with me for a few minutes another complaint that students have is the course did not cover the topic mm, it's possible but it is really highly unlikely first AWS questions do contain extraneous information. For example, if you go to the previous question, instead of simply saying restoring backups from S3, they would have Arman Oracle backups or instead of simple EC2 server, they would say JBoss server, etc. I would say just pay attention to the AWS service rather than the terms used in the questions. You know the EBS volume backups, you know S3, you know EC2 server. So you should not be worried at all about this extraneous or you know convoluted text here also let's say that they mention some service name as part of the option which is not covered in the course at all i would say just see if that option makes any sense if it does not don't bother about it but if it does just remember that aws keeps evaluating their exams and some of the questions are included which are not really part of the scoring So it is likely that the question is there for the evaluation purpose. If after all however unlikely that the question was based on some totally unexpected AWS service well tough luck but please let us know and we will definitely add a video on that to help other students. One other complaint that the students have is the practice tests are not the same as the real exam. Well they are not supposed to be the same right? 
The practice tests are just a yardstick to gauge your preparation to see if you are ready for the actual exam. The intention here is not to spoon feed the actual or the same exam questions for you and it is not going to help you pass the exam, right? So I highly recommend you to take the practice exams and try to score somewhere around 95 to 100% on the Wizlabs practice test before attempting the final one. See our intention is to prepare you for the battle. Unfortunately, we cannot fight the war with you. Finally, some students complained that they took the course but still failed the exam. I will be very honest with you my friends, if mere taking the course was sufficient to guarantee passing the exam, I would doubt the standard of such exams. This certification exam is a professional level one. It takes paying thorough attention to the course, taking notes, diving deep into the concepts, reading white papers, watching reinvent videos and attempting the Wizlabs practice test and getting around 95 to 100% on those tests. Just watching the videos will make you comfortable with the concepts but to pass the exam you need to take the efforts to go to the distance. Again, we are here to guide you and help you pass the exam, we really do. So the big question is how to prepare for this certification and pass the exam in the first attempt itself. I have some few handy tips for you. First, do not get scared or overwhelmed with the syllabus or the exam content or the expectation of preparations etc. Start reading on the posts given by the students who passed the exam rather than those who failed. Some students give constructive feedback despite failing though but these are very rare. Second, watch all the videos in this course, rewind and repeat if necessary and take notes. Note down the topics which are marked as important and those which you are finding hard to understand. Then either ask the questions to the Wizlab support or watch deep dive videos on YouTube and to get comfortable with those concepts. You can always email me and I will be very happy to guide you. Third, start exploring the options in AWS console or CLI. Make full use of the free tier account that you have. There is no other confidence booster than doing the things yourself, right? Use the AWS free tier and start creating resources, use CLI commands and see the output for yourself. Always look for the trade-offs. For example, if the topic is using tags, you should start thinking on the trade-off of having and not tagging the resources, how it will save the cost for example. Or if the topic is RDS, start thinking how it achieves high availability. How does it compare to say DynamoDB or which one will be the more cost effective solution given a scenario, right? So start thinking in that track. The next one, always look for the advantages and disadvantages of an AWS service or its offering. Very similar to the point above, look for situations where the given service or offering score more points than its counterpart. It is very important to understand which service will give you more advantage in a given situation. Next, read white papers. I already mentioned that there are few very important white papers, especially on well-architected framework or architecting for cloud, security best practices, CI/CD, migration and cloud adoption framework, etc. Very important. I suggest you take the printouts and read during your free time or a break time. This will immensely help you. Next, when you attempt the practice test, attempt the entire test in one sitting. Do not attempt few questions here and there. Treat each test as the final exam and complete in one go. This will help you manage the time during the final exam. Remember that the exam is over 2 hours and 50 minutes, right? So it really tests your mental ability to sit for such a longer time, concentrating on the exam and coming up with the final or the correct solution. Note the questions which you did not answer correctly, read more on those and prepare better. And last but definitely not the least, start thinking as a professional solutions architect. Every time you are working on an AWS service, start thinking as to how you can leverage the service to solve a business problem. How it will help the customer save cost or achieve reliability. Or how it will achieve the security, fault tolerance, high availability etc. The more you think on these lines, the more confident you will be solving the exam questions. Finally, remember that failing to plan is planning to fail. Although there is no such thing as a perfect plan, 
it is very important to create a preparation plan and sticking to it rather than not having a plan at all it will only do good for you so don't forget to include this in your plan follow the course take notes deep dive videos do the labs read white papers and score 95 to 100% on the practice test be confident and one final thing don't rush into attempting the final exam the cost of the exam is significantly high i don't know about you but paying 300 dollars for this exam is a massive amount right so be wise and attempt the exam only when you think you are ready all right my friends good luck for more details check the link in the description learn with wits labs success certified